Hi, I'm T. In 3D graphics, ambient occlusion is a non-physically based global illumination technique that emulates the shadowing of ambient light from nearby geometry. Unity has implementations of ambient occlusion, but they're pretty inflexible, not visually appealing, and you can't put it on your avatar. You can bake AO on your mesh, but technically it's inaccurate as soon as you deform it. What's a girl to do? Introducing Poyomi Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. Unlike other screen space AO, this runs in the base pass of the shader, which, especially when combined with global masking, opens up some very interesting possibilities. There are some real performance considerations, which I'll cover, but the results are worth it. Running AO every frame instead of baking it to a static texture means you can be occluded by world geometry and even other people's avatars. Let me show you how to get it set up. You'll need the included depth get prefab on your avatar. You can search for it from the project window. Next, in the shader, head to Shading and enable the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion module. The first option here is a toggle you can animate. The documentation covers recommended toggle setups if you need more guidance. Let's run through the parameters. Intensity determines how intensely AO is blended onto your material. Radius determines how far shadows spread. A smaller radius fills in little nooks and cracks better, but might miss bigger details, and vice versa. Quality determines the number of samples used for occlusion calculations and how they're distributed. This directly impacts performance, so use the lowest value possible. Center importance will shift shadow weight towards the source of occlusion, making the shadow fall off more gradual. Depth bias is an offset that lifts all SSAO shadows. Cone bias makes the center of shadows darker if they're behind a surface. Random jitter adds a noise effect that can help mask lower quality levels. You can change the shadow color here. Enabling the texture slot lets you define shadow color across the material using a texture, or you can use a ramp. Enabling the masking section will let you stop AO from darkening certain areas. I use it for eye whites. The HSVG section applies color transforms, hue, saturation, value, and gamma. Use surface color multiplies base color into shadow color, and blend mode determines how shadows are blended onto your material. Hide and light will stylistically hide AO in the direction of light. Quality falloff start is the distance from the camera beyond which quality will steadily reduce until quality falloff end, which disables SSAO beyond a certain distance. Max distance falloff determines the differences in depth beyond the radius beyond which shadows will steadily attenuate and terminate completely. Basically, it's how far the AO can reach. These should almost always be below one. Remember, you can always reset to defaults if you mess up, so don't be afraid to explore and experiment. Over the course of development, we found a few fun ways to use SSAO. Let me show you some. Either remove your base texture or override it with something like RGBA masking or a matte cap and set it to a dull pastel color you like. This is a great place to start exploring all kinds of fun effects. I'm just gonna keep things simple here by adjusting my shadow color. This is my best take on Genshin Impact's AO based on what's shown in this presentation. There's a lot of good info in here if you have any interest in anime style graphics. Remember that thing I said earlier about writing to global masks? Turns out that it's actually super powerful. You can mask off emissions with audio link, metallics, and so much more. You can get an effect similar to stacking animation cells by setting your distance falloff values close to each other at the far end. The performance cost scales with the number of pixels being rendered that have ambient occlusion enabled, so I'd urge you to turn it off before the group cuddle sesh, unless your friends need another source of heat this winter. How about the depth get prefab? It's a cleverly configured directional light. It's layer masked, so it'll never hit any renderers, which avoids generating ad passes and loading new shader variants. This means if the depth buffer's already being generated, the light component runs a few culling checks, sees there's no work to do, and terminates. Your avatar will rank poor for performance, but AO can be a performance hog. So it's not, like, wrong. We are going to keep improving performance where we can, but that involves research and experimentation, which take time. That's about it. Let me know in the comments what I should cover next. If you need help, have something to show off, or just want to chat, we have channels for that on the Discord server, so stop by. Like and subscribe. See you next time.